Hey everyone, I've been getting uh, some pretty good feedback on my update note recaps with a focus on Zhao, so I figured I would do another one for the 8.6 update, which is the Dark Enchantress update. Uh, this update goes live on June 15th. Uh, and just as a, another quick reminder, I am giving away two awesome chests to two random Twitch subscribers once I hit 50 there, uh, and then two random awesome chests to two YouTube subscribers once I hit 50 subscribers on that platform as well. So if you enjoy my content, like, subscribe, uh, comment, I always appreciate it. But um, let's just hop into it. So the Dark Enchantress update 8.6 comes out June 15th. Um, and the couple biggest changes right away. First one is there is a new god, Morgan Le Fay. Um, so if you haven't seen anything on her yet, she's a mage. She seems to be a burst mage in the same vein as um, Zeus or Aplash. Uh, Fairly immobile, but a ton of damage that she can put out. Her ult does have to see, um, seems to have some mobility built in with, with Omni, so she can move backwards, sideways, just as fast as uh, other gods can move forward. Uh, but that's really not that much mobility, especially when you consider all the CC in the game and um, just the, the power of CC immune ultimates or abilities. So I'm not going to go over her completely in depth just because there are plenty of other videos out there that do that. So check those out. Um, make sure when this update goes live that you at least take her into jungle practice and um, go through the abilities yourself so you know what to expect if you're facing her because when any god comes out, uh, in casuals at least, especially, you're going to see them over and over and over again. So you might as well get used to it. Uh, and then obviously once they get into ranked, they're kind of heavily picked as well if people deem them to be powerful. So first big update, um, I'm not going to go over the, the individual abilities. Um, I'm not going to go over the skins here either. They are pretty funny. So uh, if you are into that kind of skin, check those out too. Uh, and as always, read through these update notes yourself. I'm going to recap, obviously, but there are definitely things that you can learn yourself just by reading through these. The next big change coming out in this update is the Joust map. So I did a, a video on this one actually a while ago when the news first came out that they were switching to the classic Joust map from this new one. This is the map from seasons one to three. Um, the lane is a little bit smaller in the middle and it's also, it has corridors that are kind of small and compact. Um, so it is gonna change some of the gods that are, are gonna be valuable compared to the ones that are now. And just the mobility in the jungle is gonna be a little bit different because you kind of share buffs in a sense because it's the, the same distance from your base as the enemy base. So check that video out. I will put a uh, annotation somewhere or a link or possibly both so that you can just go right to that if you want to learn more about that specific map change. But those are the two biggest changes, biggest impacts on this Joust meta in uh, 8.6 is gonna be completely new map. So don't be surprised when that comes out and you queue into it. All right. So going past those two things, let's hop into the items and god changes. So first item, Benevolence, getting a little bit of a fix. This isn't necessarily a buff or a nerf, um, but people were kind of cheesing and buying it, getting gold, and then selling it before they had left the fountain. So that's not going to be allowed anymore. Um, obviously, that's a good fix because it wasn't an unintended mechanic. So um, if you're building Benevolence for that reason, sorry, that's gone. Uh, the mask tree is actually getting a little bit of a shift. Uh, I would call most of them buffs, and I'll, we'll get into that a little bit more uh, in this next you know, couple minutes here. But this mask, which is the first tier of the mask tree, increasing the cost from 500 to 700, um, giving you a little bit more HP, giving you a little bit more mana for that extra 200 gold. I still think that's pretty steep for the... Uh, first tier item, so you probably don't want to buy this just outright. Um, but the changes to the other mask items, you may consider uh, that. The first one, Fighter's Mask, 
increasing physical power from 30 to 40 and increasing magical power from 60 to 70. A um, little bit better here. You're really not going to... You're not building this for the second tier anyways, but realistically, you hit that second tier, you're just a little more powerful. And just as a reminder, um, this item can only be built on warriors and guardians. Which brings us to that last, the tier 3 item, Rangda's Mask, increasing physical power from 60 to 70, and increasing magical power from 100 to 120. So, you have the extra power on this item on the magical side, which is pretty significant, and then a little bit extra power from 60 to 70. I went over these last two sentences probably 30 or 40 times in my head before I just finally pulled up um, Smite Wikipedia to figure out what this even meant. Um, decreasing the damage dealt increase from 20 to 15%. So if you look at the old item as it stands right now, it has 20% damage dealt, um, adding a 20% damage dealt. So whatever damage you're doing, you buy this item, you do 20% more damage. In this next update, that's going from 20 to 15%. So you are doing less damage, right? You're doing 15% more damage with this item. Um, so you're doing less with that stat. That being said, you're getting a little bit of extra magical power and physical power. So even though you're doing a smaller percentage, the flat number of that you know, 120 or 70 physical po power is is larger so i don't know if that's really that much of a nerf on that stat specifically it's probably just i'm guessing it ends up being just about the same um, with those extra stats on the the flat power so going back to rangda's mask decreasing damage taken increase from 20 to 15 percent so this one has tw plus 20 percent damage taken you're going to be taking once this update comes out plus 15% damage taken. So you're also taking less damage. Um, that being said, you're not sacrificing any of the other stats for this. So if you're taking less damage with this item and you're doing the same amount of damage, I would technically call that a buff or a, an upgrade, right? Um, so I do think that this item is going to be somewhat popular on guardians and warriors especially the more like one shot guardians and warriors you think of uh Kabraken or maybe uh, a ymir or someone like that who can just do a ton of damage in a short amount of time before the other team has time to react before if you bought this item you're getting punished because you're taking 20 percent more damage now you're taking a little bit less which just makes it a little bit easier to survive that engagement um, so rank, the mask tree in general really doesn't get that much build at all. I don't really see anybody building this, but I can see this item coming into the meta a little bit, at least with some of these shifts. Protector's mask, um, a little bit of a boost. This is a tier two item as well, increasing the health from 50 to 100. And as a reminder, this item can only be built on mages, assassins, and hunters, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, only mages, hunters, and assassins. Um, the third tier of that Protector's Mask item is Lono's Mask, increasing the health from 250 to 300, increasing the damage taken decrease from minus 20 to minus 15. So let's look at that again. Instead of taking 20% less damage, you're going to be taking 15% less damage. So you're going to be taking more damage. Increased damage dealt decrease from 20 to 15 percent so minus 20 percent damage dealt you're going to be doing a little bit more damage you're going to your damage is going to be reduced by less um, and then lastly your increased healing is going to decrease from negative 20 to negative 15 so instead of having your healing decreased by 20 percent it's only going to be decreased by 15 percent so again a little bit of a, a shift is what they're calling it but realistically you're doing a little less damage, you're taking less damage, but if you're a healer, you're also healing more than you were before. Um, so, uh, sorry, let me just rephrase that. You are taking 
more damage, you're doing more damage, and you're doing more healing. So a little bit of a shift to an offensive item. I don't see this one being built as often either, just because if you're a mage, hunter, or assassin, I think in Joust you want to be, you want to be going more, especially mages and hunters, pure damage. Maybe assassins will see some builds uh, with this item included, but um, I don't know. I think ranked is going to be a lot more popular than than Lono's in the next update. So that's the mastery. Honestly, I don't see it built often. I think it's going to come back a little bit in this next uh, this next meta. So look out for them. Transcendence getting a little bit of a cost decrease. So instead of 2600, it's going to cost 2450. This is actually really impactful, I think, in Joust because it allows whoever's building this to get it online earlier. You also have an extra 150 um, that you're not going to have to save up gold for. Or, you know, if you're buying Transcendence in the old um, games, now if you buy it, you still have that 150 gold so you can buy. Um, a sentry ward or a couple wards or um, a few pots, right? So if you're getting this item online earlier, that's better, um, especially with like bluestone being pretty powerful right now. Transcendence works really well with bluestone. Just having that ability damage and just doing more of it, kind of ability-based uh, characters work really well. So I think this is going to be pretty popular. Uh, you might see this even work its way into conquest, but Joust specifically, I think it's going to be a lot better. It's going to feel better building Transcendence because you don't have to wait so long. Just make sure if you are building this that you're communicating with your teammates that, hey, you're trying to stack this item. Uh, don't double stack. Don't have a, you know, a mage that's also trying to stack an item because you're going to be fighting for the same, the same stacks. So that being said, I still think it's going to be a good item. Death's Toll, still not in Joust. They're increasing the magical power from 25 to 30, so trying to make this uh, item happen for ADCs. Uh, since it's not in Joust, I'm not going to go over it too in depth, but if this ever makes its way back, I do think it's a pretty good item um, for sustain, especially on, on Hunters and, and magical ADCs. Emerald Ring... Um, Emerald Ring is providing 5% attack speed for a tier 1 item that's actually not too bad. Uh, and then the Enchanted Ring is also increasing attack speed from 10% to 15%. So if you don't know what the rings look like now, uh, Emerald has 25 magical power. So the update comes out, it's going to have 5% attack speed. Obviously good for magical ADCs. Uh, and then same thing, instead of 10% on the Enchanted Ring, it's going to have 15. So more attack speed, just trying to bring some of those uh, ADC mages into the meta. And I do think there are certain mages right now that work okay in Joust. Soul comes to mind specifically. She can do a ton of damage and she's fairly safe compared to a lot of the other um, magical ADCs. Or if you're doing like kind of a hybrid Alquan, it can work pretty well too. And then going back to the update, um, Ring of Hikate is also getting uh, a little bit of a, a buff. So it's going to be 100 less gold and you're increasing the magical power from 80 to 90. Uh, and then just as a reminder on that item, each successful basic attack applies a hex to enemies and empowers you, increasing your power, decreasing your opponent's power. Um, so Freya, Alquang, anybody that can really pump out a ton of auto attacks in a short amount of time, this item is really good on. So just keep that in mind. Um, I still think Aquang is a good joust mage and uh, in this next update with all the walls and all the kind of jungling around that he's able to do, uh, I think he'll be pretty pretty good. So a little bit uh, love for the ring tree. If you're a magical uh, ADC person, you'll be happy with some of these changes. Next, we have Vampiric Shroud, increasing magical power from 25 to 30, decreasing cost from 750 to 700. So uh, a little bit less uh, um, investment for people and a little bit more on the offensive side. Uh, this item still, I think, is pretty good against a, a double uh, physical comp already, uh, but uh, realistically just makes it a little bit easier to buy early as a starter item and gives you a little more as a, a mage compared to a conduit gem or um, sands of time. All right, on to the god changes. 
Uh, so Athena, no real changes. There's just some wording that's being shifted around. Basically, it was confusing the way they had described the damage on Reach, her uh, passive. Uh, so now they've changed it to just say it deals 1.5 times the damage of her um, in-hand damage, her basic attack damage. So a uh, little bit clearer, no change at all, but just so that people know that um, how to calculate their own damage if they want to themselves. Aposh getting a little bit of a buff as well, increasing his base health from 400 to 450, increasing base physical protection from 9 to 13, which is pretty decent, and empty the crypts, decreasing the cooldown from 100 to 90 seconds. He's all right in Joust. Uh, he just suffers from being so immobile. This is going to make him a little bit more tanky. We run John Kui a little bit, so I can see him kind of being built in a similar fashion where he's just uh, a very, very hard to kill mage unless you all in on him and then you still get punished with the alt and now you're getting punished more often because it's coming up every uh, 10 seconds earlier. But I just, I think he relies too much on hitting all of his abilities and he's just a lot easier to punish. So uh, his alt is nice for joust. I just don't know how effective he's going to be. With a smaller lane, he might be pretty good too. So just keep him in mind, especially if you have uh, the opposite team is picking a lot of healing. The anti-heal built into Aplash's kit is is really valuable. Artemis getting a, a little bit of a buff also, increasing the base damage from 80, 130, 180, 230, 280 to 90, 140, 190, 240, 290. So it uh, looks like just 10 at all levels there. Uh, and this this ability obviously slows. So uh, I think she'll be okay. Suffers the same thing that Aplash does. Very immobile, really easily picked. Once the alt's done, it's just kind of like a sitting duck. So you better um, better make it happen if you do alt and, and get a couple kills in there. Uh, I just think there's better team fight ultimates for hunters as well. So I don't think this really shifts her at all in, in Joust. Horus, increasing the dash range from 35 to 40 units. Um, so Horus, is, he's okay too. I don't think he's a, a priority pick in Joust by any means either. If you maybe need some extra healing from a, a warrior, go Guan Yu, just better. If you're looking for um, damage or displacement or knockups, I mean, Hercules is better. Um, Sun Wukong is better. It's just, I don't know. He just doesn't really have a place in Joust, and this will help him a little bit, and he can obviously be picked if you like him, but I just think there are a lot better picks for for Warriors. Hu Yi. This one is, I think, maybe the, will have the biggest impact on the God changes, at least. Um, increasing base damage at all levels of his Ricochet, so doing 10 more damage at all levels. Um, why that's significant is because if you look again at the Joust map, there are just a lot more places that he can use ricochets, especially hitting triple bounces um, around you know the red. If you're trying to steal the other opponent's red, you can triple bounce around it um, and be fairly safe, right? If you're standing here, you bounce, 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 and go into their um, red buff. If you're in fighting within this little corridor, right? You can triple bounce you super easily just by getting perpendicular to the corridor itself. And the lane being a little bit skinnier, it's just easier for him to use the, the walls to triple bounce, um, you know, under tower and things like that too. So I think if you are trying to get a hunter into your comp and you don't, you haven't decided on you no know, one yet, or you're kind of going back and forth between Medusa or Cupid or whoever, uh, don't forget about Hu Yi, especially in this next update. I think he is going to absolutely be a priority pick. I don't know if he's bannable necessarily, but I think there's going to be a lot of people that rely on on him as the, the ADC. Izanami, fade away, decreasing the cooldown from 20 seconds beginning uh, to 16, and then 17 to 15. So a three second reduction in the cooldown at the beginning of the game, which should help her survivability a bit, and one second um, less of a cooldown in the late game. So kind of a lot bigger impact on the early game for her. 
um, just allowing her to survive. I think that'll actually kind of make a pretty big difference too, just because she can go around the map and farm fairly safely because she's invisible. Um, and then just really, that's what she's good at anyways, is just running around and being a farm, farm machine. So I think she'll be, she'll be pretty good and she can do some sneaky things with invisibility behind towers and stuff. So she, she might be picked a lot more often, but again, kind of comes down to her, her alt isn't that great for team fighting in the joust game mode. So a lot better hunters, but if you have a comp around her, I think she can still be good. Kumbakarna, uh, as a, obviously a support person, it's good to see some supports getting buffs and uh, Kumba definitely needed it. So throwback, increasing the base damage on the initial hit from 70, 140, 210, 280, 350 to 90, 155, 220, 285, 350. So more early game damage and then it looks like it scales to being the same at level five. Uh, this is good for his clear, which is actually pretty important in joust you want to be able to out clear the enemy team earlier so that you can go grab the the mid harpies and that's obviously in this specific meta right now um but regardless clear is always important you want to out clear the enemy team it pushes the minions closer to them um, you force them to come out of their tower just kind of things like that and then groggy strike also increasing base damage uh, but kind of the opposite keeping the same damage as it was in the early uh, at 90 but as you upgrade it it's just getting more damage so at level five it's doing uh, 20 more than it used to base damage um i think kumba will be good with a smaller joust lane and a smaller you know corridors uh, it'll be easier for him to kind of lock people down uh, and that's really what he does best is just cc them to um you know, no end until your, your teammates can follow up. So I think these are both good changes for him. Um, I think his ultimate is underrated also for just taking out one player in Joust, because if you take out one person, you eliminate them. Now you have a 3v2, which is actually a, a huge advantage. So even though it's not a team fight alt in the uh, team fight sense, you it is making a pretty big impact on the game if you can just delete somebody right away. Uh, Mercury getting some changes, increasing base damage at all levels, it looks like, by 10. Um, Mercury, not a great Joust God. This isn't going to make him a great Joust God. I would not pick him. He just doesn't work that well if you're not going full damage and he gets locked down too easily by, by most comps. So... Pick him if you want. I just don't know if this is going to make him any more viable in Joust. I just don't think it will. Merlin, Dragonfire now going on cooldown immediately instead of waiting. So um, that cooldown is going to be three seconds less because instead of going um, on cooldown after the three seconds that the Dragonfire is going, it's going to go on that first um, initiation. Um, that said, they increased the cooldown on it from you know, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12 to 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So they increased the cooldown by two seconds. They reduced the cooldown by three seconds because the dragon fire goes automatically on cooldown instead of waiting. So realistically, it's pretty simply a one second cooldown at all ranks. So, um, not super impactful, but this ability does definitely shred objectives. So having it up more often, um, it shreds objectives and also it shreds uh, tanks. So have it up more often, it's only helpful for Merlin. Rama, rolling assault, increasing the scaling on the bonus damage shot from 25 to 30, and increasing the base damage on Astral Barrage from 180, which is the same at the beginning level, up to 540. Um, so 20 more damage at the end. I think Rama struggles in Joust. He's just not as impactful as a lot of other hunters because he is such a... He thrives in a, an auto attack meta. Um, so maybe if you're building like Odysseus bow on him and getting a ton of the um, lightning going to the team members, sure, you can put damage out, but there are just easier ways to do it with a lot of other gods. So... I don't think this makes him any more viable, really. Uh, and then the ultimate itself is 
fairly difficult to hit um, and there are just a lot of walls that you have to deal with in, in this new joust map that's going to make it even difficult, even more difficult for him to see where he's aiming if they go around a corner or, or just little things like that. So if you like Rama, this will help him out. But again, I think there are a lot better priority picks. Vulcans, Magna Bomb, Magma Bomb, increasing base damage uh, from 70. So it looks like at increasing by 10 at all levels. Um, being that the Joust map is going to be smaller, I think Vulcan is going to be really, really oppressive. Uh, putting his turret down, doing more damage with the Magma Bomb, just being kind of a deceptively shifty mage in general to try to lock down. Um, I think he's going to be good again, maybe not a bannable pick, but absolutely keep this god in your god pool because I think he can be a sneaky kind of OP pick uh, in certain cases uh, just because people don't expect the damage that, that he can bring. And then his alt too, just having such a large radius and the um, Phoenix and Titan kind of being these more enclosed spaces, it's just going to be easier for him to kind of hit where he wants to or even just use it better for, for zoning purposes. So I do think Vulcan's good. Uh, he'll be better in this next update than he is right now in this game mode. So keep an eye out for him as well. And then just a few last post PTS fixes. Uh, damage buff is going to become enhanced when it respawns after seven minutes. And then buff camps uh, now spawn and begin their intro animation at zero seconds on the clock. So fairly uh, standard, but just little things to, to kind of know. So that is it. That is the update um, that is coming out June 15th. Uh, like I said before, if you enjoy this video, make sure you like subscribe here or on Twitch. Um, we I do have a full-time job with the people I play with. So they, we don't stream as consistently as a lot of other streamers, but if you wanna watch us, we usually play uh, Friday nights, Saturday nights, uh, maybe even some, some Sundays. So check us out on Twitch uh, there as well. Uh, but I appreciate you guys watching. Um, make sure to leave feedback and I appreciate uh, comments, likes, and everything. So again, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time.